the international community need to do is help the government develop a master plan. They need to have a vision of what they want Port of Prince to look like. Where do they see the residential neighborhoods? There are some camps that are in areas that are potentially viable as areas for new settlements, and there are others that are, that are not because of the terrain. So there need to be those kinds of master planning decisions made. I think a good way for people living in Washington, D.C. is if you imagine every third or fourth building in Washington, D.C. damaged, people living out on the street, and then multiply it times three. That's the scale uh, that we're talking about. The other reality is that this was the poorest and remains the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Seventy percent of the people in Port-au-Prince were in abject poverty before the earthquake. Um, the other reality that we see, uh, and this is in the 21st century disasters, is a massive public outreach caring uh, from Europe, from North America, from this country uh, that results in a big public engagement. Uh, and uh, the last reality is that their world has created non-state actors that now play a crucial role in all global disasters. Many of our, at least the initial assistance uh, for Haiti came through the Dominican Republic, through the Dominican roads and the airports, and it has continued to be a, a, a sound neighbor and, and partner uh, uh, with Haiti. Uh, and we hope and, and, and believe it will continue to play that role. Um, the biggest challenge going forward is keeping that level of commitment from, from the world um, and making sure that the pledges uh, that were made in March and the, uh, not only obviously the monetary, but also the, the, the commitment, the political, uh, economic, and, and moral support that Haiti deserves from its neighbors and from the whole world is, is, is sustained. The I just helped lead a delegation down to Haiti with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, CHF International, but uh, FedEx, uh, Timberland, Dow, and Pfizer on this. And we saw a lot of opportunity for businesses to get involved, but not a great framework or opportunity in order to do so. Public-private partnerships, absolutely. I mean, from, our pers from the development perspective, we think Haiti will not recover from the natural disaster until the economy recovers. They can't, people will not survive based on handouts of humanitarian assistance. They need to have the economic resources to purchase houses themselves, to purchase the basic necessities of life. And the way to do that is through sustainable investments that you get from public-private partnerships. So we agree completely. We launched about two or three weeks ago a partnership with the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to provide an incentive fund for M Banking. To, it's a $10 million incentive fund to provide money to the first operator, a private sector operator that sets up a functional M banking system in the country. Coca-Cola is looking very actively at a number of efforts. It's, uh, it's heartening to hear the other efforts you mentioned. We're still in the design phase of our program. So the, the question about the supplemental, um, yes, it's we hope to have the supplemental soon. The, the uh, idea is that it will be passed by Congress before the end of this month, although that, that's a decision of the Congress. It's not one of our decisions, but one of the things we're looking at is in each of the areas where we will work, which are infrastructure, agriculture, energy, health, and support for improved governance. In each area, we're looking at something like setting aside an incentive fund like what we did uh, for the M banking effort to try and stimulate innovative ideas that are, have high impact that involve private sector partners.